everybody, welcome back. My name is Jennifer Squires and here we make, paint, create, sew and have fun. Today I'm going to show you how I made my hardcover vinyl sketchbooks. So this is it right here. It's 240 pages. The paper weight is 120 GSM. I'm not sure how that works out in the American paper weight measuring system, but that's what it is here. It's all plain, plain leaf paper. It's hand stitched, hand bound. The cover is handmade and I even gold leaf this awesome little mushroom on the front. So I'm going to show you the complete process of how this was made. This video is a more lengthy video so please be patient, try to watch to the end. But dude I get it if you're bored and you click away. So on with the video and I'll see you back here at the end. The first stage is to fold the paper into signatures. Signatures are the groups of paper that will be bound into our book. My book will have 10 signatures with 6 pieces of paper in each. I am also making 10 books at the same time. Using my bone folder I make sure to press and fold firmly. Here are all of my signatures folded. Now I am cutting the backing card from the sketch pad into what will become our spine, front and back covers. I am carefully measuring so that I have two equal halves that will perfectly fit the front and back of our book. I am now measuring the spine, making sure that it is the correct thickness before cutting. Now I am placing all of my signatures into my book press, making sure it is nice and tight before leaving it overnight. After pressing overnight, I get the signatures out of the press, ready to be marked. The next step is to stack all of the signatures with a folded edge facing the same way. Thank you. 
I measure in one inch from each edge and draw a line and another line one inch away from the first lines. I find the center and draw two lines one inch apart at the center. These dots will become our stitching holes. I am once again stacking these into groups of 10 signatures. I am using this sewing pin to puncture the marked holes. The correct tool is called an awl, but I don't have one. With all of my sewing holes punctured, it is time to begin sewing everything together. I'm not sure what the proper name for the stitch I'm using is. For more information and better stitching tutorials, Sea Lemon on YouTube is an excellent resource. I am now gluing on the end pages. These pages are usually thicker than the rest of the pages and can be ornate and pretty, but ours today are quite plain. These also reinforce the connections between the cover and the text block. Now we are placing the text blocks into the press with the spines exposed and sticking out over the edge and a sheet of baking paper between the layers. We are now brushing a thickish layer of glue onto each spine. This helps strengthen the bond between the pages and also helps reinforce the spine.
We then leave it in the press overnight to dry and go outside to glue up the covers. I am now ruling out and marking where I am going to place my cover pieces so that they are straight, even and the cover doesn't turn out crooked. I am using contact cement to attach the board to the vinyl. It's best to do this outdoors in a well ventilated area as the fumes are awful. It was also only 7 degrees celsius outside when I was doing this and by the end I had no feeling left in my fingers. Contact cement works by applying the glue to both surfaces and letting it dry down until it is tacky and then carefully putting the pieces together.
We now have to prepare the text blocks for the final glue up. I place a piece of baking paper around the block only leaving the outmost end pages exposed and making sure that I am covering all the page edges so they are protected from any excess glue. I squeeze out a small amount of glue onto the text box, spreading it with my brush making sure to cover the entire page completely. I then carefully line up the edge of the text box with the edge of the cover and press them together firmly and repeat for the other side. I then place the box into the press with a sheet of paper between each layer of the stack to prevent anything sticking together. I then tighten the book press and leave them overnight. This is one of the most nerve wracking parts when everything comes out of the press for the final time.
Thank the universe, everything looks good. Now it's time to apply gold leafing to the cover. This is a one shot deal. I can't redo this if I mess up. I start by drawing on my design with a pen. I have my concept sketch in front of me. I put a small amount of leaf sizing in a half pan and then paint over my sketch with the glue. I am taking my time and painting on the glue carefully.
and leave the glue to dry. Once it turns clear, it's ready for gold leafing. I carefully pick up the sheet of gold and gently place it onto the book. I press down gently with a fluffy makeup brush. I leave it to sit for a few minutes and I begin to gently brush away the excess leafing. All of my books ready for sale. Not sure how or where yet, but it's a long term goal. And that's it. That's how I made my leather covered journals. If you want to see more videos like this, leave a comment below. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down, don't care, you do you. Um, share this video, subscribe if you want to. Um, anything you do with this video will help us please our algorithm overlords, and we'll see you next Sunday.